Today's hand features Daniel Kid Poker Negranu. He is battling at the $50,000 buy-in final table of the Poker Go Cup against some of the absolute best poker players in the world, including Ali Cernovic, Alex Foxen, and David Coleman. On the river, Negranu faces a minimum bet into a pretty big pot. I'm sure if it's just leading for the men here. We have to see if Daniel has what it takes to figure out the right play. Let's get to it. <laughs> I would say that that's worked out pretty well for everybody involved. Seven hundred start. Six twenty. Negranu's turn to get dealt pocket eights. Will it work out as well for him against Ali as it did for Coleman? Down Negranu came to this final table. Fifth out of five players in chips. It's not where you want to be. He has about 20 big blinds and raises it up from the hijack seat with pocket eights, which is perfectly fine and standard. This is a spot where maybe you could fold out some of your absolute worst pairs, like twos, threes, fours, fives. But once your pair gets decently big to where you can raise and be happy enough calling it the shove, then you have to raise it up even at a final table. So Negrande raises, folds around to Ali in the big blind, who is currently second in chips. And whenever you have more chips than your opponent at a final table, you are highly incentivized to stick around, splash around, and just generally not fold. So this is a very, very nice spot to call by Ali. Let's go to the flop. Time will tell as Mshirovich defends. And out flops the eights on the ace-queen five board. Both players have a spade working. Advantage in Shirovich in that department. bet from Daniel. I'll leave with flat. On this ace queen five board with two spades, Daniel Negranu is pretty incentivized to bet with hands that are probably best but are very vulnerable to being outdrawn. And when he does bet in this scenario, he wants to bet small, which is exactly what he does. He does go for a 40,000 bet. And Ali, with his middle pair, has a super easy call. There's no point in raising, because if you raise, you have to ask, what's going to call me? Well, probably hands contain an ace, which Negron should have a lot of. So, with middle pair, pretty easy check call. Lots of standard flop play here. Check. Second flush draw on the turn, and a second check from Imshirovich. And We saw Daniel go three streets against Coleman with the deuces. Will he get aggressive here against Ali? No. Nope. On the turn when Ali checks again, some people would try to turn a hand like pocket eights into a bluff, but I think that is completely unnecessary because pocket eights is actually the best hand a lot of the time. But if much more money goes into this pot at all, pocket eights is usually going to be in pretty bad shape because Ali's not going to fold an ace or a queen, and he's going to fold basically every worst hand besides a decent draw. So this is a very nice spot just to let it go check check with the pocket eights and proceed to the river. Pumps the brakes. Looks up at a third over card to those eights. And that's a bad one, too, Maria, because in the event that Imshirovich was in there with some sort of Broadway combo, the 10 could have easily paired. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of run out that won't really cost Negranu too much more, especially when you have Imshirovich just leading for the min here. What type of hand do you usually expect? Ali to have in this scenario when he bets minimum on the river. Do you think it's normally a pretty strong hand, a medium strength hand, or a weak hand? And if you think it is a type of hand that you presume it is, what would you do with the pocket eights? Let me know in the comment section below. From a game theory optimal point of view, which I realize is not how a lot of players play, but from a game theory optimal point of view, on this river, Ali should be betting minimum with mostly 
marginal made hands. These are going to be hands like a queen or a 10, because they are almost always good, but if you check and face any sort of a bet, you're definitely not loving it. So these are hands that can go for a minimum bet because the minimum bet is going to eke out a little bit of profit. Whereas when you check and face a bet, you're going to be in roughly a break-even scenario, which is not ideal. So you'll see a lot of the best players in the world going for this bet size with something like 85% hands like this, marginal made hands, 10% super nuts or very, very good hands that are literally never folding to a raise, and then about 5% total bluffs. What most people do in this spot, though, is they only bet with their marginal made hands, stuff like a queen or a 10 or maybe even a 5, and uh, that makes them very, very ripe for exploitation. All right, let's see how Negranu proceeds against this minimum bet with his marginal made hand of pocket eights. Talk about priced in. hate to get milk, though. Ooh, but you hate to open yourself up to a raise as well, which looks like what Daniel's cutting out there. Yeah, and that King Jack is certainly in his range. He folded. Nice work. Negranu turning the eights into a bluff. Definitely. Shirovich with that instant sense of regret that he came with yeah. the bet. Especially of that size, just one that Negranu very well targeted. I know from reviewing a bunch of heads up hands that Daniel Negreanu has played against all sorts of opponents that he has been studying game theory optimal strategies a ton. So I'm going to default to whatever Negreanu does in the spot as probably correct. Facing the minimum bet you actually should raise a decent amount of the time. More than you probably think you should. Especially with hands that are going to have a really difficult time winning if you do call. So the question becomes in this scenario, is Ollie's range mostly queens and tens, or does it have some fives or hands like pocket twos? As he has more hands like fives and pocket twos, I think Negrande should be way more inclined to call. But if he's against a range containing a bunch of queens and tens, a lot of which will fold to a raise, as we saw happen here, I think going for a raise is pretty sweet. I do think most players' ranges in Ollie's shoes will be weighted towards queens and tens, so pocket eights are probably not good. So even getting good odds, maybe it does make sense to use his hand as a bluff. The question then becomes, which hands do we want to use as bluffs? Well, we probably want to block the auto calls. Which hands are going to always call on the river? Well, this is going to be hands like two pair, which we can't really block in this scenario. And then hands like um, straights. Those hands are always going to call. So I think it would be pretty nice in the spot to have a king or a jack. But if you think about Negranu's range to raise from the hijack seat five-handed, he's not going to have a whole lot of random jack x at this point. And he's really not going to have a whole lot of king x because he may even fold hands like king seven suited in this scenario because of the payout implications. So I think at this point, Negranu just wants to find hands that can't really win all that often at the showdown. Simple as that. And then use them. I'm trying to think if the spade is all that relevant in this scenario. Um, Negrande wants to make sure he's blocking the auto calls so that he does not get called as often. And uh, he wants his opponent to have an auto fold. So what hands would automatically fold here? Maybe stuff like four, three of spades. Maybe eight, four of spades. Um, eh, probably maybe, maybe ten, eight of spades. Maybe these are all hands that do go for the small bet. So having that spade makes it less likely that Ollie has that, which I think is actually kind of a bad thing. So I'm not sure this is actually the best candidate to go for this bluff raise in the spot, but hey, sometimes you may know your opponent. You may know that whenever they go for the small bet, they're going to fold you a ton. Maybe you know that your opponent thinks that you would not have the fortitude to run a bluff in the spot, in which case they're just going to immediately fold, as we saw Ali do, which kind of says he thinks Negrano's not going to bluff all that often here. So if you know your opponent's going to think that when you raise the river in this spot that you're going to have almost entirely good, strong value hands, then the right play is to go for the bluff. This time, Negrandu does it, and he scoops up a very nice pot. That's going to be it for today. Huge thanks to PokerGo for letting us use this footage. I appreciate them very much. I love playing in the PokerGo studio. If you ever have a chance to get in there, check it out. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. Make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons below. They're right down there. Don't forget those. Don't forget those. Those are good for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll talk to you next time.